Hi, thanks for watching the video today. We're going to be talking about setting up a Power BI dashboard to monitor health in multiple Revit projects. If you watched the previous video, Revit Model Health Dashboard Sample, this is very, very similar to that workflow, very similar to that process, very, very similar results. There was a lot of uh, attention and a lot of interest in that prior video. So it was decided we would make a new Power BI template and a new video that allow you to aggregate your data from different Revit project files. The original one focused on a single Revit project over a period of time. This takes it to the next step of letting you check and monitor health between different projects over a period of time as well. So we want to demonstrate how we're going to create a Power BI dashboard for your Revit models. There is a provided Power BI template and an already created model health dashboard sample check set. Again, if you've used the prior, if you look at the prior video, if you use the prior dashboard is the exact same check set file, but there is now a new Power BI template that you can leverage. It's been designed as works for Revit 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. It's running on the current version of the model checker and the dashboard was built on the current version of Power BI, the February 2020 release. We don't anticipate any issues for future versions, but we did want to lock this down and make sure people were aware. So ideally, once we're done with this video, you're going to be able to generate reports like this inside of Power BI. Again, these are the trending data for multiple Revit models that you can see over time. This is just one page of the sample Power BI template. I'm going to show you some snapshots of the other pages as we go through. So the general workflow is that you're going to run a check inside of a Revit model with the provided check set. You'll export those results to an Excel file. We create a Power BI report from the provided template. We configure the report to pull data from our generated Excel file. And then over time, we can simply add more Excel reports to the folder where Power BI is looking. And the report will automatically update and refresh and aggregate that data over time. So what you're going to need to get this done are the Autodesk BIM interoperability tools for Revit, where Model Checker is included. You can get that through the Autodesk desktop app or you can get it right on your Autodesk account manage page and download it there. You're going to need the Microsoft Power BI desktop app. So if you don't have access to that, get in touch with your IT team to, uh, to help you out with that. You're going to need the Power BI template and model checker check set. There are multiple locations for the model checker check set, and I'm going to point out a couple of those as we go through this video. But the Power BI template itself is in this zip file here, and there will be a link to it on the BIM interoperability tools page as well. So again, there's, there's the dashboard.zip, which is the single project template, and now there's dashboard-multi.zip. So we'll have links to this inside the description notes of this video also. And you're going to need one Revit model to start with. It's easier to have an exported report and initially create your Power BI template from that rather than starting from scratch and having an error out on you. So to set up things and to kind of go with continued tracking, I'm going to do a quick overview of the process, but then we're just going to step in and walk through it in Windows and in Power BI and Revit. But the general overall steps are initially you've got to create a location to store those Excel reports. And this is critical uh, for, for Power BI to find to keep exporting your Excel reports here. It needs to be one location and nothing else should be inside of this folder except those Excel files or Power BI is going to get a little mad. Inside of Revit, you need to set up the model to use the dashboard check set and model checker. There's a little bit of configuration we have to do inside of the model checker setup. Specifically, we need to tell Revit which year our model is. Then we're going to run the report. We're going to export the report. In Power BI, we're going to open up the provided template, Revit model dashboard, multiple projects. We tell Power BI where the location of our, ex our exported Excel files are. And then in Power BI, we're going to save that report. So a little bit of information here. You need to do the model checker setup once per Revit project file that you are doing. So you need to, um, skipping down to step two, you need to set it up to you, set up a model to use the dashboard check set. You need to identify which year of Revit it is. Um, but then ongoing, all you need to do to monitor trending data 
is to keep running the model checker and exporting those results to Excel. The first step is simply to identify a location where you're going to collect all of those exported Excel reports from Model Checker. The location doesn't matter. It simply needs to be a place where Power BI can access it as you are creating that Power BI report. So in my base drive here where I'm collecting all my exciting projects, I'm just going to make a new folder and I'm just going to call it Reports. All right, now there's nothing in there. The only thing I want to put in there are these exported Excel files. If Power BI finds anything else in there, it is going to error out. So take a look, there's nothing in there now, but we're gonna start putting our exported Excel files in here. And this is where we are going to point Power BI to when we open that template up to tell it where to generate that data from. My next step for getting my Power BI dashboard configured is going to be to set up the model to use the dashboard check set inside of Model Checker. So I've got my Revit model open up here. I'm gonna set this up like I would set up any other check set. I go to the BIM Interoperability Tools tab and I go to Setup. Now there's two places I can find this. One, if I look here inside of my project folder, I downloaded that dashboard-multi-zip file, and when I unzipped it, the Revit model dashboard XML check set is already in here. However, if I don't want to grab it from there, I can just scroll down here as soon as Model Checker opens to the public library, and I've got the model health dashboard sample check set here as well. It's the exact same XML check set, so it doesn't really matter where I grab it from. So once I've got that selected, or if I load it in there, I say OK, and now my model is pointing to that check set to generate the right data, to look at the right things, to export the information in Excel that Power BI is expecting to find when it creates that report for me. So the third thing I need to do is inside of my configuration for the model checker, I need to actually tell this check set which version of Revit I'm using. So if I click right here on model dashboard checks, and if I scroll down, I'm going to see down here uh, a couple checks, total elements Revit 2713 through 2020. So there's different categories between the different versions. That's why these had to be broken up because if I was looking for a certain category uh, that only exists in 2020, but I was running it in 2017, I would get an error and have some problems. So depending on which year I'm using, I wanted to be sure I select the correct year and deselect the other years. I am using 2020 here. So I'm making sure 2017, 18, 19 are off and 2020 is on. And then once that configuration is done, I'm just going to say save and close. And now that customized configuration is stored inside of my Revit model file. So it knows to go and read the XML off the website and it knows to not run those three checks that do not match this year of Revit. I don't want to turn off any other checks or else again, Power BI is going to get mad because it's not finding the data that it's expecting to find. Our fourth step is simply to run the report in Model Checker. So I've already gone through setup. I'm going to click on run here on the Model Checker panel. It opens up the usual Model Checker run dialog box. It's going to ask me if I want to run this on any links. I'm, I'm not going to at this point. So once the run dialog box opens up, I'm again, uh, the list of the models I'm going to check here. I have no links in here, but I don't want to check the links here anyway. I want to do that natively in those files. And then I'm just going to click run report. And the Revit model checker is going to go through. It's going to make an evaluation on these checks that are built into the dashboard check set. And once it's done, it gives me a little preview here. This is not really what I'm interested in at this point because I'm just trying to aggregate this data. But from here, I can go and do step five, which is to export the report results to an Excel file. So down here on the dialog, there's the Excel button. Click that. It's going to ask me where I want to put it. And I'm going to uh, open this up and track down my reports folder that I created in step one, it's empty here. The name of the file does not matter. Dates are nice. So let's go ahead and just give it a date that is today and probably the project number since we are going to be using multiple projects here. And then I'm going to say save. 
I don't want to export list elements. And then I'm going to say OK. And once it saves it out there, it's going to ask me if I want to open the export. I'm not going to because I don't need to look at that raw data right now. I'm going to use Power BI and let that look at that raw data for me. So I'll say no here. I'll say close here. And then if we were to go back and actually look inside of our reports folder, there is that one exported Excel file. So again, nothing else should be in this folder except for these Excel files. And we'll just keep adding more and more Excel files from these exported reports for Power BI to update that and look at it. So I have Power BI open. I'm going to go and open up that template that was in the zip file that I downloaded. The location of the template simply doesn't matter. Like any other template, it's going to open it. And then I'm going to save that file as a new file. In Power BI, we're just going to file and open. I had saved all that stuff on my S drive under projects, under the project where I unzipped it. And you'll notice there's nothing in here now. I do have to change my file type because it wants to look for a Power BI file. So I need to change that to a Power BI template. So once I click on that, and then I say uh, select the file here and click open, it's going to open up that template and prompt me for some data. Once it opens up, it's going to ask me for a little bit of information. That, that takes us to step seven, where I have to actually add the path down here where I'm saving all those Excel files. You don't want to change any of these parameters up top. These are kind of baked in and are exposed through the template formatting, but we don't need to change those. But I do need to put that folder path. Now, this path is just a text file. It's not a directory find or anything like that. So if I go and I track down that folder path here, here's that reports folder. I can simply highlight that, copy the path, and then paste it in here. And then once it has it, I just click load and the template opens up and Power BI goes and it reads that one sample Excel file that's in there and it's going to start populating a relatively unimpressive, but it will start populating that dashboard report for me. Again, we get the most bang for our buck out of this report as we start adding more projects and adding more exports over time. So we can see it's opened up. We've got that one Revit file indicated down here, and we've got our one point of data accessed as well. It's showing up on all of our tabs down here inside the report. And then once I've got this configured, this report knows to look in that reports folder. So the last step is simply to save this Power BI report. And then whenever I need to access it and update data, I just hit refresh and it will update the information as needed. You're going to collect those Excel reports in a single file folder like this, and you're just going to keep generating the model checker reports and filling up, uh, filling up this folder. Now, the first report you run, when we first build it today, it'll be one report on one model. It's not a very exciting report to look at. So over time, as you add different projects, you'll see we start to have more points of data. And where things get interesting is where we start monitoring that data over time. So periodically, perhaps once a week, perhaps once every two weeks, you're going to want to open up your Revit models. You're going to want to generate those reports, export that Excel to that folder that you've already identified, and then refresh the data inside of Power BI. And this is going to expand as we keep adding multiple projects to it as well, allowing us to monitor information between those projects, look for trends, look for issues. We've got one page here, which gives just general data overall, like file size and elements and warnings. There's a page specifically on views. There's another page to talk about imported files, so CAD files and raster images. And then there's a page on links, work sets and design options. Another nice feature of the Power BI dashboard is you can select an individual project down from the list of projects you have in the report, and it will filter each of these pages by that project. You can also do a control select if you're just interested in kind of monitoring between a handful of projects in there. So ideally, once you're done, you will share this data. You can create a PDF, maybe make a PowerPoint, a screen grab. Uh, or you can use the online Power BI sharing, which is which is available for those of you using Power BI Pro. So just some quick tips and notes to wrap things up. Just keep in mind the model checker has an unusable elements report. This is not an exact match for the UI purge unused dialog. Uh, we can't access that data straight through the API, but it should be a good general reference about how many items inside of your project are not being used. 
The dashboard only looks at the date, not the specific time. So same day reports matching the same project are going to confuse Power BI a little bit. We certainly strongly recommend that you identify a schedule to run your reports on. And then finally, same project files are identified by the path and the Revit file name. So with that, we hope you find this information useful. We hope you find the provided dashboard beneficial. You are welcome to use the Power BI dashboard and template and dissect it and modify it any way that you see, see fit, any way that you need to so it aligns with your specific needs as well. Thanks for watching.